Hello everyone and welcome to the final one of our videos in this series on contestable markets. This video is all about the policies that governments can use to increase contestability. Before we do that though, it's worth reminding ourselves of why a government might want to do this. So what are the benefits of a contestable market? Well, first of all, the more contestable a market is, the more likely it is that it will achieve allocatively efficient outcomes. And we've seen on earlier videos how the threat of entry affects the day-to-day -day behavior of firms. So any incumbent firms making super normal profit are vulnerable to hit and run competition if they're in a contestable market. And we've seen as well examples of how smaller disruptive businesses can challenge the monopoly power of incumbent firms. And key in all of this is that the threat of entry when markets are contestable is as important as actual competition in the market. So on this slide, we've got the four categories of types of policies that governments might consider and might use. So first of all, they might deregulate an industry. So remove some of the legal barriers as to who is allowed to do what and how. Second one along, they might seek to open up previous monopolies. And the example on the side is of open reach. Um, they might take steps to ensure that incumbent firms don't have in place strategies to reduce the amount of contestability of the market. So for example, they might take a very tough stance on predatory pricing. And some governments around the world may take steps to encourage international trade as a means of increasing the contestability of their domestic markets. So let's have a closer look then at legal or statutory entry barriers. So examples here are market licenses. So who are you going to allow to do what and how? Uh, patent protection. So patent is a legal right to be the only person producing a particular product using technology usually that you have developed. Um, who state awarded franchises are awarded to is important in the contestability of a market and import controls are a key way of influencing how open an economy is. So let's have a look then at policies that a government might use to increase new technology and encourage innovation. So a thinking task for you, what needs to be in place before businesses will research and develop new technology? Pause the video for a couple of minutes while you jot down some ideas. Welcome back everyone. Well, there's a number of things you could have said here. Here are my ideas. Uh, first of all, you're going to need a suitably skilled workforce, access to finance, um, a suitably entrepreneurial and risk taking attitude and sufficient confidence that a profit can be earned from your research and development. So let's have a look then at patents, because patents are very key in giving businesses the confidence that if their innovation is successful, 
they will be able to benefit from that profit. So one of the benefits to the economy from a patent is that it does encourage research and development. It also encourages the exploitation of external economies of scale, such as research projects with universities. If innovation is encouraged, then we're going to see gains in dynamic efficiency, and this brings benefits all round. There are macro benefits as well, multiplier effects, gains in export competitiveness. It's a key source of long run economic growth. And we might see benefits to society as a whole from investment in research uh, via external benefits from health research, environmental patented technology and so on. But there are disadvantages, though, of patent. So first of all, they allow supernormal profits to be made. Uh, it's possible they will stifle competition or innovation by others. And the monopoly power that they allow may mean that there is a loss of allocative efficiency because the firm in question will have an incentive to restrict output to elevate price well above marginal cost. And the risk too is that the lack of competition will lead to X inefficiency. Let's have a look now at innovation as a possible barrier to entry. Well, first of all, innovation can be a barrier to entry in markets uh, because they protect the property rights embedded in product innovations. And it's possible that these innovators will gain a large first mover advantage that gives them even more scope to exploit monopoly power in the market. But on the other hand, though, innovations can reduce barriers to entry. They can be disruptive, remember, rather than sustaining. So they might free businesses from a single source of supply, such as the open source software. Um, and technology isn't always a source of competitive advantage if competitors exploit it too. So the last task in this video and this section, an essay question for you to try. Evaluate the effectiveness of policies to increase contestability as a means of reducing abuse of monopoly power. Have a go at this question. Check your answer with your teacher to make sure that you are along the right lines. And there we are, an end to our series of videos on contestable markets.